Good day everybody. Welcome to Larez Studio. Well, this is a special video um, for a very special young lady who contacted me uh, over the internet and um, over my website asking for, you know, a little bit of advice. So I ended up sending her some pigments and I promised her, her name is Sophie, young young girl who's um, just had her um, year 12 formal so very very new newbie super newbie so these are the pigments that I've sent her and these are the pigments that I've promised to use in this video to help her with her project now she's doing a project for school so very quickly Sophie Okay, so and, and any newbie, super newbie out there who's never done any resin or any pouring art or anything like that, ever. So, this is for you. Sophie, what you're going to need is some gloves. Okay, so you can get these um, in in Coles or Woolies, wherever you're shopping. You can, you can get these. Um, get some cleaning stuff. This is not advertising any of these people. It's just what I use. It's real quick. Just a multi-purpose multi um, uh, wipes which have uh, so much alcohol and it's great for cleaning things. And you're going to need some resin obviously and your pigments. You already got them. The boards we were talking about in our texting. These are the boards from Kmart. So this one is about half a centimeter so it's about five millimeters thick and it's primed on on one side you can get that they're about three dollars each maybe four it depends on well, I haven't bought any for a while and these are placemats it's just cork underneath it uh, it's a little bit of MDF there maybe about two three millimeters and then there's this vinyl kind of covering so I was think I might just do something on this. These are real cheap to buy, maybe dollar fifty. Okay, um, so you are asking about what happens when you have some already color underneath it. Will will the the resin cover it? Yes, it will. All depends on how thick you apply and how thick you you mix your paste. So you will need some plastic to work on because this will drip and it'll be very hard to take it off. Just because of the glare, I'm just going to flip this over this way. Now, the torches. Okay, so for one-off, if you're only going to do this once, I I recommend that you ask your mum or dad if they have um, one of these electric uh, heat guns. Okay, any, any heat gun. Doesn't matter brand or anything. Just because of the safety, I've got these blow torches and they can be quite dangerous especially a young young lady who or young man who have never used them you can get smaller ones now, I haven't got any butane in here so I haven't used them I just use a big one but you can get them in smaller sizes if you ever choose to you know pursue this later oh there it goes um, you're going to need a mixing cup to mix your resin in and you're going to need some smaller cups for your pigments and you can you know if you're doing a bigger piece obviously you're going to be using bigger cups for that and um your resin what else what else i'll probably think of it as i go i want to get started so i don't have to so nobody you know has to wait oh yes make sure that your surface is level i'm sure your your dad will have one of these they come in all kinds of different sizes just um, this, this is a, a level so you need to level your table and pop things underneath maybe to make sure that this bubble is right in the center whichever way you turn it just so that your resin doesn't kind of flow one way I, I tend to get it now some tape can't do this with your gloves on it's a real pain because it, it um, sticks to your gloves so I hope that you are uh, following this so far and if you have any questions just um, you can text me okay you've got my number 
or anybody else uh, if you have any questions this is for super come on get off super newbies who have never done this before um, a real easy hopefully easy project we'll see you never know so okay stirring stick one big one for the big cup and smaller ones for smaller cups so what I do is tape the underneath so the way I do that is am I still rolling yes it's good I just go all the way up to the edge like this and then just go around no um, rocket science here but sometimes it does get a bit tricky and people are not sure which way to do it and then again I'll go all the way to the edge and uh, this is just to to make sure that the underneath doesn't get too messy and you can pull these real easy now this is just a, a masking tape that you can get at at, um, at a two dollar shop or you can even use sticky tape I, I'm guessing but I don't know how well it would stick masking tape sticks really well electric tape works really good too because resin doesn't stick to it just uh, slides right off it which is great but this works it's easy, it's cheap, and you don't mind, you know, wasting it because it does look like you're wasting it. And now I ripped it. I hate it when that happens, and you have to go back and find it and pull it back up and hopefully line it up right. There we go. I'm going to go around and cut all this so that um, it's all nice and neat. And another one here. And I managed to rip it again. So now that that's done, what I'll do is just go around, make sure I press it down just with the back of my uh, scissors. And then I go around and cut those bits that are, that are hanging. I always do it on a bit of an angle like this. Just making sure that you're getting all that. And just go around and cut all that off and make sure you've got good scissors and these are new so they should work good anyway I'll cut it and come back okay so I did that cut it all off you can even go again and just press that down just to be sure that that's stuck just on the edges here because that's where you'll you'll get the the leak if you do you may not but most likely you will because when you're first starting you don't really have a good um, kind of control over how much to pour on and where to pour it on and then it sort of overflows so don't worry about it if it happens I'll also lift this up a little bit you can use cups you know just like plastic cups to to um, to hold it up just to elevate it off the board so you don't get it sticking on the board I use these things I think they're very handy they're just uh, from the sticky tape so you can pop them underneath and get another couple and put them there this is quite okay just like that and um, yep yeah, let's start mixing for this size board which is about oh, 30 maybe 35 centimeters wide I think about 150 milk won't need more than that of resin but we'll see and my resin I have to measure by weight it will tell you on uh, on the, the packet whether it's measured you know by weight or by volume so you'll you'll have to figure that one out when you get it just read the instructions so I just go and this is one to one ratio so let me just uh, focus on this. So what did I say? About 150. So that's about, uh, let's say 80. Let me make it 160. All right, well, 70. 70. One more. So 75 grams of part A. So resin comes in two parts, okay? You get part A, which is your resin, and part B, which is your hardener. Just give me another second so I don't muck it up. I've got to bring it up to 150. At this stage, you can you can kind of um, turn your 
your scale off and start again so you get the right, what was it, 175, 150. Sorry, just got to get it right. 40 or 2, 3, 150. Okay, so that's 150. Make sure to put the lids on the right container so you don't get them all mixed up. And see what I mean? You get your fingers a bit messy. That's when you grab your alcohol wipe or your multi-purpose wipe and, and you can wipe your hands no problem. So I've got 150 milliliters of resin in there. Now Sophie, I believe you said your dad uses resin. So your dad will be able to help you with the, with the ratios. Like I said, this is one to one ratio, which means one part of part A and one part of part B. So uh, when there's two to one ratio, so it's usually two parts of, of the resin and one part of your hardener, then you've got to measure it right. Your ratios need to be pretty uh, spot on. Now, if you're off by a few grams, it's not going to matter. But you, you know, because they allow for that. But you, if your dad um, is very experienced or experienced in that, in this, you know, he'll be able to help you mix it. So when you mix your resin, you, depending on the resin, some resins uh, don't give you too many bubbles. You can get that many bubbles in there. You can get more than that. Don't worry about the bubbles. They will, they'll. We'll get rid of them. I'll show you how to do it. So we are mixing usually about two to three minutes, but depends on the size. This is only 150 ml, so it's not going to take that long to mix. But you're also watching and looking at the any stringy bits. You don't want them if it like a hairline. So if it's got that in there, mean, means it's not properly mixed you got to mix some more and you scrape the sides and the bottom another thing that I would really recommend is to use um, a respirator especially when you're doing this for the first time you don't know if you're going to react to resin it is toxic even if it says on, on the bottle <coughs> that it's not it, you may react to it and um, and you don't want to be all, you know, um, horrible looking for a while until until it all goes away. It's uh, it's not it's not fun at all. OK, so a respirator would be good. Otherwise, if you don't have a respirator, I would say have your place really well ventilated. Have the fans going, have the air conditioner blowing, just blowing that kind of um, the the fumes away from you. Okay, here we go. Now I've got my resin ready, and I'm gonna walk you through the way I mix the powders. Now you can just fill up the cups and then plonk the powder in there, but you're running a risk of having that fly everywhere and you're breathing in all of that the the dust the particles from the the pigment you don't want that do we so what we're doing is just going to put a little bit of the mixed resin into our cups and then oh, I've just got to get a, a stirrer stirrer any stirrer and um, then we're going to get some of the pigments like that and then you scoop a little bit and you pop it in there keep your face away from it and then what we do is just give it a real gentle mix first because you don't want those particles flying out and you breathing them and once that's all kind of combined now you can add and top it up Okay, so you can have it like that and I will get a bigger cup as well so now just stirring 
this stirrer is not very good it's very flexible so that's why I'm kind of beating it um, just want to combine it all in usually stirs very very well without a problem these are mica pigments they're just amazing colors amazing and they mix super well so I'm going to do the same this was the Azua I'm going to do the same with the rest of them and while I'm doing that I just want to tell you about priming your board now I haven't primed this one as you can see it's got that vinyl covering over it but if you want to you can um, and probably would be a good idea that you do do that this is just a turquoise blue very pretty color same deal you put in 10 percent 10 in there um, you can put a little bit extra doesn't matter with the the pigments your resin will still set and doing the same thing so if you want to prime your board you should use well you shouldn't no shoulds or shouldn'ts really but you you can use a spray paint just to paint it uh, or you can prime it with some gesso artist gesso so it comes in a black or a white or just um, some acrylic acrylic paint you know um, I'm, I'm not doing anything to this I just want to show you that you you can get away with without doing it and I will make sure that my resin flows over because I want it to have that grip on the sides okay so there's my turquoise how long are we going already 17 minutes oh okay so same way might stop the video here because I'm doing the same thing this is the um, blue ice just gonna stop it here and then uh, start when we're ready to go okay colors are all mixed look how beautiful they are let's start so my oh it's raining outside my um, blue ice is quite a, a pale blue and it's it's transparent if you want it to be transparent and it can be quite an opaque I need something to lay these on a piece of paper just trying to be clean this is the thing it's a very very messy job the reason why I've sent Sophie the the pearl white rather than the angel white which everybody loves the angel white is a is a paste and this is a powder is because I didn't want to confuse her with with the different um, types of pigments to start with here we go with the the blue ice so you see that that's moving already all by itself I want it to be kind of a, like a sky up there and it's moving that away so you can see that that's because the table hasn't been leveled properly but we have ways of preserving the drips and using them again so that's no problem but for this tutorial which is a spe specific one for Sophie um, we're just going to go with with the actual pour and this is going to be a, a beachy scene because that's what Sophie wants to do now Sophie I'm using my stick to to move the the paint you can say around um, however I do like using my hands and that's what I'm going to do and you can see how it's pulling that way just means that it's um, not leveled properly so that's what I'm doing just moving the pigment see how that's covered even though it's a transparent because it's so thick there it's covered that that black underneath it and you don't have a problem at all okay so we've got that now hope it's not too dark like a little 
sky again your alcohol wipes or multi-purpose wipes and we're going to just bring it down a little bit and this we call tilting which is obviously why because I'm tilting it down and just moving that that resin and because I didn't put any of this clear resin underneath there that's very dry it's it's not allowing it to move any further <coughs> which is good that's what I wanted now we're going to go with this blue uh, azure so I'm just going to go and you can use a teaspoon if you want to pour it in there see if I can find it oh I don't think I have one handy or you can just it's a little bit hard to do it when you're doing it first time to have a, a proper line and this is all going to move anyway don't don't try to make it perfect it will move and then you'll be disappointed don't want that so I want some of it there and maybe a little bit of it down here as well I'm going to have a lot of that white there but I want to have different shades of blue coming across here as well like that and you may have noticed I flipped them I flipped the cup like that I can't remember if I flipped it before but anyway I do flip it and let all of it drain out and then I'm gonna get some of this turquoise blue which is just absolutely amazing and gonna go here a little bit in between then I'm gonna dab it with my finger because I want the that's going to be like a shallowy end over here. I might even mix some more of that azure. Very, very random. You could do this painting with two colors, just a white and a blue. And I will mix some more of this azure, but let's see, might even have enough. Now, pop them over there. Now I'm going to use my finger to bring this up to the edge and merge them a little bit with this. Like I said, you don't have to, you can just pour, but this just makes more sense to me and it gives me um, more, you know, control, I guess. And you can see here how that's really transparent. You can see the black. We can fix that in a second before I pour the white. So that blue azure and the turquoise blue are mixing here together and creating a really pretty color, but not completely mixed in together, if you know what I mean. They are, they're still separating from each other. I will mix a little bit more of that azure since I've got plenty of uh, my resin left now get it always get a clean uh, stirring stick pop it in there so you don't contaminate your powder with a dirty one and you would mix it into a paste and then add more but because I'm in a hurry now I'm just gonna mix it right in like that just make sure it's away from my face so I'm not breathing it in it's the worst thing you could do to yourself is breathing this stuff even anything that's chemical and and you read on the bottle non non-toxic don't believe them you know it's not healthy for you to breathe it in if you ate this you would it wouldn't kill you so I think that's probably what they mean by non-toxic but uh, don't don't try it <laughs> right -o. so let's go uh, a bit more of the blue here absolutely love this azure such a pretty color and then we're going to add some more here and we're going to leave that there as a shallow kind of end and maybe a little bit here we'll use a stick for that just to do a little whoosh like that in there and then just gonna tilt it a bit 
more that way now. Dab anywhere where you feel that it's not covered. Now, now I'm going to pour in. At this stage, I would go with my torch and blow out all the bubbles. I will show you how I do that. I'll just get my torch. You don't have to do it, Sophie. I'm just showing you so you can see that. It really pops the bubbles beautifully. Keep your alcohol wipes or any alcohol away from the flame. You, it will catch on fire. Now let's go with the white and this is like I said the pearl white. I absolutely love it. I'm going to put a little bit up here. Oh I love that. Just underneath there like that. Some up here. And you can see I'm going over it. You can contain it on top. You can even tape, put tape over like so and keep it all in there so you don't get any mess. I'm um, just going to go over the glue like that because it's not a perfect horizon. So it's like a wave there. Maybe a wave here. Another one there. I, I tend to put too many waves in. <laughs> and all of this is going to be white. I fill it in. If, if you have any coasters laying around, you can use up the rest of the you know resin and just uh, paint the coasters that's always fun so I'm just bringing this all the way to the to the edge and then I'm going to use my my um, heat gun now you can use a hairdryer but the force of the the air um, blowing is just too too much and you'll have all of this fly off you know and um, it does create wonderful wonderful effects but you don't um, definitely don't want it when you're first starting because you don't know how to control it so here we go here comes the heat gun I'm just putting it on the low setting first Now high up. So already that's starting to look good and um, it is still working this is pulling down nicely uh, you don't want to hold the torch too long in the same spot you will burn your resin and uh, it will stink and it will you know ruin your painting so this stage you might want to tilt it up again a bit more and fix some things it is dripping I know I will collect all of them So I'm going to go around with some more, fiddle a bit more. This stage I want to go around and pull all of that. Even you can pick up some resin from the, the, the sides and then cover all of that. Okay, we got some more pigment so we're going to play a little bit more. Not a lot of this one left, which is fine. Wow, all the cells happen in here.
So what I'm doing here, I'm just creating, this is a little bit more advanced now. Not too advanced, but for the first super newbie it may be. I'm just creating a little bit of depth and I just dripped in there. That wasn't supposed to happen. You, you don't know if you can see it from up there, but this pigment just sitting on top like that. just And then dragging it over like so, creating a little bit of depth. Same here. Just adds a little bit extra interest and like I said it will keep moving and moving and moving until it's done and then it will stop. I could even add a little bit of it here, create a bit of a wave. Just having fun with it. Um, when you're first starting you usually just do a pour and leave it <laughs> because it just becomes too daunting you know it's uh gets a bit scary but as you progress and get more um experienced have more times that you've done this it becomes much much easier and we'll add some more white to it oh there's a drip what not to do There we go. There's my wave right there. Wasn't planning on putting a wave in there, but there he is. And then some more of this. Definitely need more of this one in there. More in here. See how it's gone a little bit thick. So this is a thing. You have a working time of anywhere between, or I should tell you on the bottle, of your resin how long you've got to work and you should have your room temperature at about 22 to 25 degrees celsius for the perfect kind of uh, timing and i've just added some more of the resin into my my colorant so it's quite transparent now if you can do that it's quite okay and i just want to add it in various places and because it's so transparent it kind of drops down and creates this really really awesome um, kind of um, depth it's what we always like a bit of depth like that area there with that one single cell and I want to add some more here just to follow that I like the white there already, but I might just add a little bit. Hmm, not sure. So I'm just dragging now. This is what I'm doing, just dragging the stick up and down a little bit. And then I've got some more of this white that I think I want to add here. as my wave and hopefully I will be able to create a splash sometimes I just do this to help it along and then some more heat from the heat gun I know what you're saying. Don't worry about it, it's all good. Bugger, there's another drop there. I'm just covering up that there.
now that's going to work I'm happy with that I know it's not the you know the way I had it before but I just want it to be pretty subtle might even add a little bit here I'm just dragging it now got more control that way there we go and wiping each time now this is a bit too complex I understand but you've seen the first part and that's where you can stop when you've seen what you've seen me do and you're happy with it you can stop there I'm just going to add a little bit more of this white up here and then I'm going to hit it as well with some or oh, might not it's got a bit of white there and we'll just continue it over here and a little bit over here so I love that area there don't want to mess it up you can overdo it very easily and I tend to do that more white over here now I've only got a tiny little bit left and it's getting a little bit thick now but I like it and this pearl white is just amazing if you haven't tried it try it just adding bit more of that white there just to give it more interest I, I love that part there it's just amazing and these are just like little waves up um, in the distance sort of and put a little one here just tiny little ones mm -hmm. quite abstract and now my my pearl white's totally dirty looks kind of grayish but that's fine because I can keep doing that and having it kind of more subtle I like that, so I'm going to add a little bit more there. Create another little wave. Looks like a bit of a fish. So, like I said, Sophie, this becomes a little bit too too much, but you stop at the, and I will kind of um, put it in the description or in the during the video so you can see where you can stop and don't have to go any further it'll still be nice um, but I just like to continue and show other people you know what to to do to create some more cool stuff and I've got some more of that turquoise left and what to do with it you can also use some of this clear to create depth which is also really awesome But I don't think, okay, there we go. I'm just going to go over here with it. Sinks right down the bottom. It's really cool. Go over the white and across. You see how that opens up? I'm just going to go over here with it. Sometimes I say, you know, I like the, the way something looks, I don't want to touch it, but then. I still go over it with something, <laughs> but uh, just you just gotta go with the flow. And sometimes you go against the flow. If you know what I mean. There. Love it. This turquoise blue is quite also quite gorgeous might add a little bit of it here go from this end follow that line
Okay, if I had a little bit more white to go in here. But I don't. Okay, so that is that for this painting. I do want to move this a little bit and try not to disturb this. It's a tiny little bit, got to know when to stop. That's lovely, and it just created something else there now. Love it, absolutely love it. Um, I do want to add a little bit more of this turquoise just because I've got some, and uh, you can just keep going, or you can stop. I never know when to stop. So I just keep going with it. And now it feels like it needs more there. Like that. It's done. Now we'll stop. Oh. Okay. So now that that's done, I will bring you down so you can have a closer look. Just real quick go over it with the torch to blow all the bubbles just very quickly over it and you can see how it's catching so be careful with the torch very careful and you can get a toothpick or something and pick out any hairs or anything like that that may be hanging around but that looks gorgeous um, real, real cute so I'll bring you down so you can have a look Get a closer look of this. Okay, here we go, starting from the bottom. And I'm sorry about all the other stuff you can see in there. So you can see all the little cells. There's that, the wave. Looks pretty cool. We're going around and looking at that depth. And I will bring you closer to this part here turn it around so you can see what I mean when I say depth oops sorry okay does that look to you like this um, texture there well there's not that's just stuff that's happening underneath it's perfectly flat and you can see that when I do this see perfectly flat it's just because I poured that clear resin over the top of it and that's what the pigments, how they react. Pretty cool. Looks like a little puddle in there. So that's it. I'm going to let it sit now. Oops. I'm trying to zoom out, but anyway. Um, yep, yeah, just going to let it sit now and then take some photos later on when it's done. Bye for now. Hope you liked it, Sophie. And I hope that uh, it helped. Okay, I'm back. I collected all of that, um, all, all of the drips and put it on here. That's going to be a little sculpture. But you can see that my resin has moved. This is still great. So I'm not going to touch that, but I definitely want to do something with this part here. Alrighty, now I'm happy. That's going to pull back, create more cells, and it's giving me some more drips, which is pretty cool. So I can collect more of those drips and put them on my little sculpture to be. Around. Okay, that's it. Uh, now I'm happy. Okay, so here it is. I went back to it and fixed this area here. Sometimes you do that. Uh, resin will allow you to look at that. That is so much better now. That even looks like some sort of a water creature with the eye and everything. Huh. Okay, so 
that's that. Real happy with the cells. It's just uh, turned out um, pretty cool, I think. I'm, I'm liking it a lot. And here's my little sculpture to be. I'm just waiting that for, to set a little bit so I can play with it a bit further. So that's it. Thanks so much for watching. And I really hope it wasn't too much for you, Sophie. But you can see what you can create. Um, do be safe, though. Please be safe. Use a, a respirator or a mask and ventilate your, your, your place. Don't do this in a closed room, whatever you do. Um, don't have any pets around and birds or dogs or cats or anything like that. Nothing. Just got to be very, very, very safe and careful. So hope this helped somebody else. And the more I look at it, the more I'm finding all these other cool things appearing. Just um, a real pleasure. A real pleasure. Alrighty, that's it from me. Bye for now.